She doesn't cringe. She doesn't run. She's not naive about what's coming. She knows what's coming. And she laughs. Because holy women of old hoped in a sovereign God who promises to help women whenever she needs Him. That's what stamps most deeply. A woman in Christ knows her Bible, knows her theology of a sovereign God who makes promises, knows His promises to be with her no matter what. She draws strength down from this and a certain kind of tree grows up from this massive, deep root of hope in God. That's number one. Number two, this hope in God yields fearlessness. Verse 6, second half of the verse. And you women are Sarah's children, are her children, if you do good and do not fear anything that is frightening. Which comes from hope in God. There's plenty that's frightening in the world. Frightening in relationships, frightening in children, frightening in health, frightening in the future. And Peter says, you will be Sarah's daughters if you're not afraid of anything. Because you're a holy woman who hopes in God. He's sovereign over all these frightening things, and you know that, and you rest in Him, and that drives out your fear. Mature Christian women are not naive about what's coming at them. They've read the rest of the book. Chapter 3, verse 14, Even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. She knows suffering's coming. Chapter 4, verse 19. Therefore, let those, we could just simply say, those women, let those who suffer according to God's will and trust their souls to a faithful Creator while doing good. The deepest root of a Christian woman is hope in God, and it yields this strong tree of fearlessness in the face of suffering. Third, growing out of that hope in God, fearless faith, is a certain kind of attention to adornment. Let's read it. Verses 3 and 4. Do not let your adorning be external, the braiding of hair, the putting on of gold jewelry, or the clothing you wear, but let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. That cannot mean that it is wrong to give no attention, to give any attention to your hair. It cannot mean that it's wrong to wear an earring, a bracelet, a necklace. And the reason it can't mean that is because if in that sequence of hair, jewelry, clothing. It meant that it would mean she couldn't wear clothing, which manifestly it doesn't mean. So don't let your adorning be your clothing doesn't mean you can't wear any. And don't let your adorning be your braiding of your hair doesn't mean you can't do it. And don't wear, don't let your adorning be gold jewelry doesn't mean you can't wear any. What does it mean? It means that when you think about 
Focusing your mind on something, focusing your energy on something, focusing your time on something, that's not where your mind goes. Your mind goes, I will spend my life, I will spend my creativity, I'll spend my prayer, I'll spend my efforts becoming beautiful with a kind of beauty that is imperishable. This thing, this thing is going to perish. Promise you, it will. Before you're dead, it will perish. So don't put your big investment there. It will let you down. This will not. And not only will this not let you down, but God looks on it and really likes it when a woman devotes her hope in God, her fearlessness. I will become now a beautiful woman with the kind of beauty that can never perish. It's a matter of proportion. It's a matter of priority. I don't want the women of our church to let themselves go. You understand that? But in our culture, that's not usually the problem. Usually the problem is all the investment is going into the health club, the hair, the figure, the jewelry, the makeup, Please, i got to look a certain way when the energy ought to be flowing the other direction. So that's the third thing. So first, hope in God. Second, fearlessness of all the frightening things that are coming. And third, out of that contentment in God, there is a kind of endor- adornment to which you give very energetic attention. And it isn't makeup. It is mainly the inner person that you are becoming. Fourth. Oh, before I give you the fourth, my note just reminds me, he does get specific about the nature of that inner person, namely tranquility. That would be the word I would use. to. He says, the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. Verse 4, the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. In other words, out of this hope in God, fearlessness, the adornment is tranquility, serenity. Not anxiety, not loud, boisterous control, but a steady, strong, deep, tranquil, peaceful, gentle quiet, serene, inner spirit. Nothing shakes this woman. Now, number four. Submission is what grows from those three things. Verse one. Likewise, wives, be subject to your own husbands. Verse five. For this is how the Holy Spirit Women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves by submitting to their own husbands. So please, do not try to produce that fruit without this tree and this root. Hope in God, fearlessness in view of all the fearful things that are coming, the adornment of a sweet, deep, Strong, unshakable, serene, tranquil spirit yielding this. Don't go here first. It will not make you beautiful. This will. It is very sad to me that we live in the culture we do in regard to these things. Because modern society, even in the church, neglects or despises the complementary differences between headship and submission in marriage. It's regarded as a cultural leftover, sub Christian from the first century. Others distort it into pathological 
strange behaviors. I sat in my off 